Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at Justin's Fish Room and today we have a video that I feel is very very important in all of what we are doing here at the JFR uh, community which is teaching, learning um, and sharing experiences to do with breeding rams and obviously the most important like aspect to breeding rams is to have a male and female pair um, quite often I'll get people asking me to sex their rams um, saying oh my, my ram pair has not bred in the six months that I've had them um, can you please confirm whether they're a male and a female and lo and behold it's two males or it's two females so I've also had a lot of people complaining to me about how all the ram groups on Facebook um, they've just left all those groups because they just constantly asking can you sex my rams can you sex my rams and people are very fed up with it so I thought it would be a great opportunity um, to take what I know um, as I'm, I think that I'm very very good at sexing rams and I've answered a lot of those posts on Facebook uh, ram for forums um, to do with sexing rams so I'm going to use some images, I'm going to use some videos, some video footage of different types of rams and um, basically just go through the different characteristics of those rams um, that help you identify whether it's a male or a female. Some of them do overlap, um, as in between like a black celestial ram and an electric blue ram, um, things like the dorsal fleck. Uh, the angle of the dorsal fin and the pectoral fins, all that sort of stuff, that um, kind of all overlaps. But I'll go over it, over like all the different types of fish, just so that you can get an idea um, if you're a little bit worried about whether your particular mutation of ram is a little bit different to the ones I currently breed. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to do a bit of a B-roll. Uh, voiceover kind of video this time so I really hope uh, you guys appreciate the sound quality in that um, but yeah let's get into it Alrighty, so I'm going to have a look at three different characteristics. So if you have a look at the, the trailing end of the dorsal fin, see how it's very, very round. Now we'll see in the next image that the male has a very pointed one. The body of this fish is very short compared to the male, and the colour intensity is not as strong. So this is a very typical female EBR. Um, another characteristic we can see is a very rounded stomach. Now with the male, you can see that trailing end on the dorsal fin on the right there is very pointy. The dorsal fleck or extension is also very, very thick and a lot more pronounced. The stomach isn't as round as the female's was and the pectoral fin of this fish is a lot more vivid in color and is also longer. So everything that was said for the EBRs can be applied to GBRs as well. But you see with the females, the dorsal fleck is particularly um, exaggerated in this type of ram. The female looks very similar to a male EBR in terms of that dorsal fleck and the colors are very pronounced. But you've got to remember that the female GBRs have spangling on their black spot, where males actually do not have as much spangling. Now, in saying that there are individuals with a lot more spangling, um, in the males, but overall the males are a lot more colorful and the size difference is something that you'll definitely notice when comparing a definite male to a definite female and I'll show you some footage of that now. Now these are some of my adult uh, GBRs and you can see the difference in size between that male and this female and that's actually a pair of rams. They're the same age um, you can see this female is just laid eggs 
very, very pronounced dorsal fin, so she would be the dominant female. And that is not a dominant male, but um, yeah, so that female, I'm going to have to look for those eggs somewhere, or just leave them. And then all of these fish in here, so that's a male in the middle of the screen, that's a juvenile that I've just put in there that's the same age as the fry, let's see if I can focus, maybe it won't, in that tank. But they were just so dominant that I decided to pick them out for breeding. But you can definitely see the size difference between those GBR males and females. So here is a black celestial ram female and you can see that her spangling, um, can't really see because of the light, but her spangling is really, really full on, um, which is great to see as this is very typical of the black celestial line that I have going. Um, but then you look at the dorsal fleck and this is where people get very confused because she's got a very pronounced dorsal fleck. Um, and some people who are perhaps a little bit less experienced may think that this is a male just based off that characteristic. But indeed, this is a female as she has that very, very typical spangling and her stomach is a lot more, um, she's disappeared now, is a lot more pronounced as compared to, say, this guy. Um, so there are very, very big differences and you can see there is a male um, blue black and you can see the shape of the body as well and the size um, is also a very telling characteristic of a male um, as opposed to a female. Now when you look at something like an EBR electric blue ram you can't really go off that that spangling because the whole body is spangled really and uh, you know the so you're kind of resorting to the shape of the fins where you can see there she's flaring very beautifully for us and wanting to spawn in that log. Um, but, you know, her, her fins kind of look like a male's, which is, this is the male here. Um, and they're a lot more similar. But the way I sex these guys is the shape of the belly and the size of the ram. So female EBRs tend to be a lot, lot smaller. So she's about a half to even a third of his size. And you can see she's got her ovipositor out, so hopefully I've managed to get her to spawn. Um, and there's a black celestial male. And there's the female. So, yeah. That's kind of a little bit about the the darker jeans and the EBRs. So due to the lack of all dark pigmentation, we can still use the pink belly uh, in these fish to determine females from males, but also the dorsal trailing is a very clear indicator. I don't usually use dorsal fin extensions as a clear indicator for this type of ram, just in my experience, because it's quite variable. But the ventral fins on these fish do have that color intensity that is a lot more intense in the males. That's also a very good indicator that I use. So this is the result of getting ram sexes right when you're trying to breed them. This is video footage from a customer of mine who is continuously having success with my line of dark rams. Um, and these have turned black because, well, they've gone darker because they are spawning and obviously raising fry at this point. And all those little white guys around them, those are all their fry. And this is a pretty large spawn. So congratulations to the breeder. You know who you are. And yeah, so this is what we want. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for watching today's video. So we had a look at different methods to sexing rams. And quite a few of them are pretty pretty much the same between the different mutations. There are some variations due to color variations in the fish themselves. Um, I haven't done any of the different body types yet, but if you do want me to do a video on that, please let me know. And if it's as popular as um, I hope it will be, 
I will definitely get some breeders that I know who do breed balloon rams um, to send me some footage and we can do that. But that might not happen. We'll see how it goes. Um, but any other types of rams, colors that you want me to cover, I can still do that if you request it. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it very informative. And um, yeah, happy fish keeping everyone. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.